Hey everyone, it's Veronica and in this video I wanted to show you how I used animation for an educational animations challenge in the eLearning Heroes community that was last week. So this was my entry and I used animation in I guess what you could say three different ways. So firstly just some normal traditional easy entrance animations. Then I used this animation to show and hide a help tab in this case. And finally, this animation here where when I put the liquid into the chamber and then I close out of this extra information, the pipette goes back to its spot so that you can do it again. So let's get going on how we can use these animations. So first up we've got our simple entrance animations. So if you select any object here on the screen and you go to your animations tab, you can see all of your entrance animations over here on the left. So some of my favorite ones that I use all the time are this one called a float in animation. And of course your traditional fade in animation. I use fade a lot. So if we just play this in the player, you can see this one is the float in for the text and that one faded in quite nicely. With the text animations, sometimes I use the option under effect options of animating as paragraph or by paragraph. And down here in the timeline, if you expand that text box, which has now become bit like a group of text lines with every break it'll create a new line and you can stagger the lines as they come in. So I do tend to use that quite a bit. Another couple of my favorite entrance animations you can see on this screen are the swivel and the wipe which you will see right here that's the wipe with the liquids coming into the test tubes and the pipette there was the swivel animation. Number two, the next one that I want to show you is how this help panel flies in and out when you click the help button or the close button. So I've tidied up this slide just so that we only have the objects that we're working with here. So this is a combination of a fly in and a fly out animation. So an entrance and an exit animation combined with some hidden states. So first of all, we've got these three objects, the text, the help tab, and the close button that fly out when we press the help button. So for that to happen, these ones need to be hidden as their initial state. You can see the close button, the text, and the help tab are all hidden. And then these two objects, the help button and the text box are the ones that come on the screen to begin with. Secondly, you need to set up a few triggers and they are all set up on the help button first and on the close button next. So for the help button, we've got three triggers that are the same. They just apply to different objects. So this one is to change the state of the tips text to normal when the user clicks the button help. This one is the same but it'll change the state of the help tab yep, to normal when the user clicks button help and the same for the close button. And then the triggers that are applied to the close button are basically the reverse of the ones we just saw. So change the state of the help tab to hidden when the user clicks the button close change the state of the actual close button to hidden when the user clicks it and the same for the text. Now the reason that this works in this way is because these objects, so the text and the tab and the button all have entrance and exit animations applied to them. Namely the tab has a fly in animation coming in from the left and a fly out animation going out to the left and that is what makes the tab fly in and fly out when those triggers fire. 
So this one is making these triggers, all these objects rather, turn to normal, and this one is making those objects turn to hidden. And finally, number three, I wanted to show you how we get this pipette to first take the liquid from the chamber. That's glitched a little bit there. And then move back to the spot to where it's meant to go. That's better. And then back there. So that is achieved by using a motion path animation. So if I click on this pipette here, I'll just lower this so you can see better and go to the animations tab, you can see that this pipette has an animation called a motion path, which starts from this green point back to this red point. So the user is going to drop the pipette on this funny shaped hotspot that I made. That is going to trigger the layer to show up. And when the user presses that button, there's a trigger here to hide the layer and also a trigger to move the pipette along the motion path when the user clicks that button. These are test tubes with liquid in them. The liquid itself is separate from the test tube image and they also have a wipe down, sorry, a wipe up animation when they come in and then a wipe down animation when the user drags and drops the pipette onto the hotspot. So you can see that here we're going to say change the state of drug A, which is this one, to hidden when the user drops the pipette on that hotspot. And there you have it. That's three different animation types used in Storyline. Traditional easy entrance animations, entrance and exit animations used with hidden states, and motion paths to return the object to the original spot. Any questions or comments, please leave them in there, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.